new. Beloved. Free. Happy. Beautiful. But the world, it beat me up. Rejected me. Said I was different. Not pretty enough. Not good enough. Unworthy. But the world can't tell me who I am or what I'm worth unless I let it. I am loved. Because God made me new. I am new. We are going to explore everything that God has for you, the way that you're designed, the way that you're made, the way that you're gifted, and what that's gonna look like as it unfolds. It's just so easy to compare yourself. I started to feel very insecure. I felt like betrayed. I wanted to have these friends that were in the cool crowd. I can be involved with missions work wherever I am. Be brave enough to be on the outside, who you actually are on the inside. Welcome to the final session of Brave Girl. This is the most important session of all because it's about the most important relationship of all. It's also Jen's favorite session to teach. Why? Because it's 100% about God, His plans for you, His hopes and dreams for you, how much He loves you and wants to be in a relationship with you. That doesn't mean that a relationship with God is easy though. It comes with questions. It comes with doubts. It's normal, even good, to wonder about your faith. Wrestle with it because it means you care. Jen will talk about how to deal with your questions and doubts as you make your faith your own. She will invite you to ask serious questions, search scripture, and take your faith very seriously now and into the future. First though, let's hear from Miriam. She was feeling broken and confused in her faith when she realized her brother, her biggest role model of all, no longer believed in God. So I grew up in a Christian home, and I kind of lived off my parents' faith. And then I moved, and at my new school, there weren't a lot of people who were Christians, and people did not look positively towards the Christian faith. So I wanted to maintain my faith, but I was struggling with fitting in there and not really knowing where my place was. So I looked up to my brother a lot more. Um, and then I, I never thought that he would stumble in his faith, but he told us that a few years ago that he no longer believed in God. My relationship with God was crumbling as well. And my family and, and God are the two biggest parts of my life. So I was definitely feeling broken and very confused as to what I'm supposed to believe. Trying to decide whether my faith was my own or whether it's just a product of my parents. So um, I, I kind of had to decide for myself whether I was gonna own it or I was gonna lose it. I decided to make have my faith invade every part of my life, whether it's my relationships with my friends and people at school and my family and just my relationship with God as well and make sure that it was as strong as it could be and that people knew what I was about and that I wasn't living a double life. And so that meant that when people would ask me to do things that I didn't agree with, then I would have to say no and I would have to show them or tell them at least that that wasn't something that I believed in. That didn't mean that I couldn't have any friends, but it meant that I couldn't be a part of this 
culture of partying and drinking and hooking up with people. Um, I had to be set apart from that and set apart from this world. Another challenge I faced is one of my teachers um, is very against Christianity and one day in my English class my teacher was asking the entire class to write about how any God could allow bad things to happen to people and then she showed us a slideshow of awful images. One of my friends passed me a note during class asking me to talk afterwards and she didn't consider herself a Christian but she believed that there was God and she didn't know anything about Jesus but um, she wanted to hear my perspective as a Christian and so we were able to talk about that and it was just incredible to see how from such a condemning experience God can just bring us closer and I can I was able to tell my friend about what I believed and God was the one I was living for and it was no longer just about being part of this world. I super extra love that story by Miriam. Um, I'm feeling this as a parent who's about to launch a kid um, into, the, into the great big world and I, I really want to have this conversation with you. Is your faith your own? And I think for a lot of you, the answer is yes and no. Um, especially those of you who have grown up in church. Some of you at this point are basically renting a faith from your parents, right? It's, it's their faith and they've brought you into it and you've grown up in it, but is it really your own? I, I tell you why I ask. This isn't just like a light question. It's not inconsequential. Um, there's a really great study out right now that says that of the kids in your age group who have been raised in the church, um, who, have, who have, just like you, that by the time your age group is 29 years old, 80% of them will be gone from the church, 80%. And this is really happening right now. Your generation is leaving their parents' house and figuring out that their faith was never theirs. It only belonged to their parents. And now that they're out from underneath their roof, faith is inconsequential in their life. So it really matters right now. It really matters to your faith story that in high school, in middle school, while you are still sort of under the authority and protective covering of your parents, you decide right now, is this mine? Do I believe this? Um, how does this affect my actual life? Is this real in my heart? Is it anchored in my soul? So I wanna tell you a couple things that you get to do. Um, things that maybe you don't hear a whole lot, um, depending on what sort of spiritual environment you are in. Listen, now is the time to ask really good and even really hard questions. So do it, press. What, where's your tension at? Where's the rub? Um, where, what is it that you don't understand? What is it that you can't get your mind around? Let me tell you some good news that it's taken me 20 years of being an adult to discover. Faith, God, the kingdom, all these things are not nearly as pre-packaged and shrunk wrap as we've presented it to you. Okay, I know what youth group culture is like. You get this sort of party line. This is how we feel. This is how we vote. Um, this is how we believe. This is, these are the words we say. This is our language. I have news for you. It's bigger than that. Thank goodness. Take it seriously before you leave your parents' house and you have not done this personal work. And then you find, I don't really have anything to hold on to. I don't have anything that's, um, that I can grip here. And so I guess I'll just let it go because I'm telling you, this is the one thing that you don't want to let go. This is the one thing worth fighting for, worth fighting through, worth investigating, worth asking hard questions of. Okay, this is all that will last. Honestly, it's all that'll matter. This is gonna carry you through for all of your days. Listen, I tell my kids, and I have five kids, ages nine to 17. I tell them, I really only want three things for them. This is it, it boils way down. My goals for them are like super reduced. Um, number one is that I want them to be kind, okay? That is just their marching orders. That's how God told us to encounter and live on this earth. Be kind. The second one is be you. We've already talked about that in our sessions. Be exactly who you are, because you are superb, okay? Don't try to be anybody else. And the third, love Jesus, that's it. 
everything else falls under those three things. Okay, if you love Jesus, okay, if he is yours and you know that you belong to him, if you've done the hard work of developing your faith and giving it strong roots and owning it in your own story, I am telling you, I'm not afraid for your future. You can face anything down. He will be with you. He will be for you. You will be listening to him. You will follow his leadership. Um, this is the way to live. I promise you, this Jesus life is the one you want. And so press in, find somebody trustworthy, um, find mentors who you respect and who you love and who love you and dive into the hard stuff. Because I'm telling you, if you can own your faith now as a teenager, it will serve you so deeply in your 20s and in your 30s and on into adulthood when you are making the most important decisions of your life. So I'm telling you, Jesus is always pursuing you. So you pursue him too. I've always kind of had this idea that missions work is for, you know, adults, you know, going on mission trips, you know, I'm just a high school student, you know, what could I do to make a difference or to be involved in the kingdom of God? Well, a ministry I've been involved in the past couple of years has been the Special Friends Ministry, which is a ministry for kids and adults with special needs. I went with my family as a volunteer. We would be buddied with someone with special needs and then go with them throughout the whole week and have fun. I was buddied with the sibling of a special needs child. She was five years old. And it was kind of difficult getting used to the fact that I was the only one with her that would look after her needs and things like that. As the week went on, I grew up more comfortable. We played, we had a great time each day. She had such fun with all the activities we did. And I think, you know, she learned to trust me at the end of the week. She would sit on my lap and I'd give her piggyback rides. I think that bond was really rewarding after being so nervous at first. I went back the year after that. I had a really good time the first year. And so both those experiences really kind of helped me to kind of relax and go with, you know, what God's leading me to do. The experience encouraged me to go into the Special Friends Ministry in our church, not to stop there right after the mission trip, you know, and just leave it at that, you know, but to continue with what I've learned and experienced. I think after being stretched in those things, that those were both out of my comfort zone. I realized I can be involved with uh, the special needs ministry right where I am. 16 years old as a high school student, uh, I don't have to be grown up. I don't have to be 25 or 30 or 50. I can do it right now. That's what God's called me to do. Girls, I am so glad to be in this final session with you. Um, this one energizes me and excites me and thrills me. And I want to talk to you about your gifts, your callings, your talents, and your passions, and your future. What I know about you, you don't quite yet know about yourself. Um, you suspect it. You realize it's coming. You feel the whispers of it and the stirrings of it. But what I know, and all of us ahead of you know, is you are being developed into an incredibly capable, incredibly exciting, passionate generation that God is going to use to further the kingdom, to further his church. Um, what, what is set in front of you is thrilling. Um, I often watch you and your age group with just awe at the things you are capable of, um, how smart you are, how globally minded you already are. I mean, I could not even pick out 10 other countries in the world on a map when I was your age. You've got your eye to the world, you love people, um, you've, you've bent an ear to justice and to things that matter. I think what is set in front of your generation is unprecedented, honestly. Um, I believe that God has set you aside for a special holiness that has not been seen yet. You very much are a part of it, you are gifted, you matter, you have a real role to play, a real place in the kingdom of God in your generation and in your time. Ephesians tells us in chapter four, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. God put a special grace on each one of us, including you. You have a very specific, very apportioned grace to you. Um, Paul goes on to say, it was he, it was God who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. 
There are so many spiritual gifts listed in scripture. Um, generosity, giving, serving, teaching, leading. And according to this theology, you have a special grace upon your head. You are so good at something for a reason and for a purpose. And I'm here to tell you right now, it is not too soon to lean into your gifts. It is not too soon. You are already developing into the woman that God is gonna create you to be. And for the purpose he set aside for you. So my question to you is, explore it. What are you good at? What do you love? Where is that natural place where you just sort of come to life? Where you're like, this is what I love. This is what I do. If you're not sure, ask somebody else. Usually the people who love you the most are able to identify your gifts long before you are. Okay, your, your best people could say, oh, here's what you do well. Um, here's what I see in you. Here's the strength that you demonstrate. Ask what you're good at if you're not sure. And then I cannot tell you this enough, invest in them right now. Don't wait. Okay, I'm not waiting for you to be 29 um, to make an impact. Absolutely not. Today is the day. Um, you'll never have these years back again. You are planted in your school or in your community exactly as God intended you to be right now. You have a purpose today. Um, your whole life is not waiting until 10 years from now. Um, invest in your gifts, practice, develop muscle strength in the way that God has made you, which usually looks like serving other people. Apparently that's how God created the kingdom of God. All right, he gifted us so that we can serve each other. He gifted us so that we serve each other and then build up the church. And so your gift is probably gonna serve someone in some way. It is gonna help your community in some way. And I want you to hear me say this. You are absolutely not too young, too inexperienced, too green, too new. You are not too much and you are not too little. Okay, you're enough right now. We've already talked about increasing measure. Will your gifts and talents develop as you get older? Of course they will, okay? But you have them right now. You're seated with them right now. There's so much you can do. We are not put on this earth to live for ourselves. It's just a fact. I wouldn't want to live like that anyway. That's so boring and that's so lonely. We are here to serve God and to serve people. That's it. We all have the same marching orders. Okay, we're gonna come about it from different places. We're gonna, we're gonna attack that with different giftings, but that is what we are all called to do. Love God and love people. And so I want you to know that I am watching your generation with great anticipation. I am literally on my tiptoes, biting my fingernails off to see what God is gonna do with you. And I know that it's something massive. Um, I know that he wants to use you to love and to heal the whole world. And he's going to, he already is. You are already that special. And so I don't want let, don't let anybody speak disvalue over your life right now. Nobody, those are voices to reject. Okay, that is not the voice of God. Those are voices to resist. Um, I only wanna speak honor and purpose and strength over you because you are going to rise up in it. You are. Um, your best years are ahead of you and it's gonna serve me. It's gonna serve my generation and the one before me. Um, it's gonna serve the whole world. And so girls, I want you to know that with all my heart, I am praying over you I'm praying over the beautiful, unique way that you've been formed. I am praying over your talents and that God will use them in a mighty way, okay? And, and don't get confused. Mighty does not always mean huge. Mighty usually looks like ordinary ways in ordinary places where we live. Most of us are not gonna be superstars on a big stage. Most of us are gonna live where we live and love the people around us. That's mighty. Okay, that is mighty. Don't imagine that your life is small, but we will all love and serve the world probably in small, ordinary ways that count. You add them all together and here we are, the body of Christ, serving the world, serving one another. You are a part of it. You're the next generation, okay? We hope to pass the baton on, onto you with such strength and confidence in you. And we're going to, and you're going to rise up and we are gonna watch you do amazing things in the name of Christ. And we are gonna watch you develop and serve and we are gonna be so proud of you. So know that we are for you, we are cheering you on. Okay, we are here to serve you and mentor you and lead you until it's your turn, okay? I love you girls, all right? 
be strong in Christ, be good to one another, be good to this earth. I'm telling you, God is for you. He will never leave you. He will lead you all the way in strength. You have the God of the universe on your side and he's made you on purpose. You might have questions and you might have doubts, that's okay. Miriam's faith only strengthened in her struggles and Catherine's curiosity catapulted her into an amazing ministry for special needs families. Jen's excited about your faith and your future and you should be too. As you close your Bible study time together today, take some time to share faith stories, ask each other questions, Celebrate what God is doing in and through your group. He's given each of you all you need for a brave, loving, and meaningful life. Thanks for watching.